Welcome to the 2016-17 school year Consolidated Demographic Enrollment and Assessment Participation Certification Training. This training will support LEAs in the certification of accurate and valid demographic and enrollment information for all students attending school during the 2016-17 school year. The student population is comprised of all students who have ever enrolled during the course of the 2016-17 school year from the first day of school through the last day of school based on an LEA's calendar. This certificate, certification data will be used um, for the following purpose, assessment reporting, equity report, adjusted cohort graduation rates, federal reporting, OSI accountability system dry run in school year 17-18, the Charter Performance Management Framework, otherwise known as the PMF, review and renewal data analysis that are completed by the Public Charter School Board, other research such as the State of Discipline Report and the State of Attendance Report. This data will not be used to amend existing prior data sources and will be considered authoritative. The demo certification process differs from last year in two key ways. First, last year the certification took place on Excel spreadsheets. This year the review of data will take place in CLIC, and any changes that need to be made to the data will be made in the source system. The second difference is that last year the PARC and MSAA participation verification process was separate from the the demographic verification process. This year, the processes are combined into one, giving a longer window during which LEAs will certify all demographics, enrollment, and participation information pertaining to PARC, MSAA, and DC Science. There are four main sections in the CLIC app that represent data LEAs did not review as part of the demographic verification process last year. I will briefly, briefly review these. First, Great. To date, there has been no process for LEAs to certify grades. The grade sheet that will be reviewed in a few minutes provides a calculated grade level field called assessment and reporting grade. This data field re represents the grade in which the student has been enrolled for the greatest number of days at the current LEA. This field is important because it represents the grade in which OSI is expecting the student to test for assessment. The second section is the first ninth grade year. In previous years, first ninth grade year has been verified retroactively during the ACGR process. This year, LEAs will be verifying the first ninth grade year for all high school students who enrolled for the first time in high school. Most of these students are ninth graders, but the verification also includes students who may have enrolled in 10th, 11th, or 12th grade for the first time in the 2016-17 school year who have not had a first ninth grade year previously verified. The third section is for English learner students. Currently, there's not a system which captures and reconciles data for EL students. Due to ESSA requirements, OSI is making efforts to work with LEAs to improve the overall quality of EL data. The EL data will be used for two key purposes. First, to identify those students who were EL during the 2016-17 school year and second, to identify students who were EL monitored during the 2016-17 school year. OSI has added a number of unified data errors and anomalies to assist LEAs in identifying unusual or unexpected patterns in the EL data to assist in the process of improving overall quality in EL data and to ensure these fields are accurate for the 2016-17 school year. The final section that is new for this year is the PARC MS. SAA and DC Science. As was previously mentioned, LEAs verified participation rates and full academic year status for students participating in statewide assessments through a separate process. This year, LEAs are able to view and certify the SA calculation and participation rates of their students throughout the MSAA and PARC testing windows. When we get to the PARC and MSA pages, I will go over the process in more detail. The demographic certification CLIC application is comprised of 14 sheets. We will review each sheet in detail throughout the training. Your LEA head of school, data manager, and an assessment point of contact should have received the demographic certification technical guide as well as the process overview. 
The technical user guide mirrors the corresponding sheets in the CLIC application for ease of use. The data dictionary within the technical guide shows the permitted values that can be used in your subsystem. The expectation of each LEA is to review each individual data sheet. Data elements written with NA indicate an instance where a value for the corresponding data element is not expected. Data elements written with missing indicate an instance where a value for the corresponding data element is expected and where data needs to be provided by the LEA. All missing values are designated using red text to aid LEAs in the identification and resolution of missing data elements. It is your responsibility to review the Unified Data Errors Click application so that all data errors can be resolved prior to the certification date. You will need to make any necessary corrections to the data in the source system. Confirm the CLIC application that the data were transmitted and reflect correctly. If any issue persists, submit a request for support through ossi.data at dc.gov or submit a ticket in the OSI support tool using the demographic certification category and the 2016-17 subcategory. We will now walk through each sheet in the CLIC application. The first sheet that you will see is the Demo Certification Summary Sheet. This sheet is comprised of all active and inactive students who were ever Stage 5 enrolled at your LEA during the school year. If you would only like to see a certain subset of active or inactive students, you can always use the filter here to just show only the active students. Once you are finished viewing just active students and want to see all students, ensure that you um, Remove the filter from either here or in the filter pane by checking on the X. This also shows students with disabilities who were ever enrolled at your student or are currently enrolled at your LEA. English learners as well are shown here. We also show for you the membership tracker conflict, which can be found in the LEA membership tracker within the SLED data management module. Also, we show you the unified data errors that are only pertinent to the demo certification process. Please remember that you will need to go to the CLIC Unified Data Errors application in which to resolve these errors to see the resolution path. We also show you your gender breakdown at your LEA by male and female, the race and ethnicity breakdown, as well as your student count by grade. Please recall that if a student grade is missing, it will be reflected in red here in the bar chart. We have also given you the ability to export data as well as download the process overview as well as the technical guide. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that due to ESSA guidelines, we are no longer calling special education students as such, but they are now referred to as students with disabilities you will see this reflected throughout the application. We are also no longer calling um, students as limited English proficiency or English language learners. They are now referred to as English learners. This too will be reflected throughout the application. The second sheet is demographic conflict. As always throughout this application, you will have the ability to filter on the student status of being active or inactive. We have also given you the ability to filter on the US size first name or last name. This sheet shows you a more detail of your student conflicts that are reflected in the LEA membership tracker in SLED. We give you the student count by conflict type, which are comprised of race, ethnicity, date of birth, last name, first name, and gender. We also showed you the percentage of students having membership tracker conflicts at your LEA. You have the ability to download or review the student data here in the bottom portion of your screen. The next sheet reflects the entry and exit of all stage five students 
ever enrolled at your LEA for this school year, even if that stage five happens prior to your start of your school year for your LEA. We give you the entry counts by month of entry, the exit counts by month of exit, as well as the student count by exit code. You have the ability in this sheet to actually filter for students who were stage five entered, entered prior to the start of your school year by selecting yes and showing that filter for those students. Students should not be stage five enrolled prior to the start of your school year. Those students will need to be corrected in your LEA SIS or by correcting the start of your school year calendar in eSchool Plus. We have also given you the ability to download the OSSI entry and exit guidance for the current school year. The next sheet, as referenced earlier in the training, is the grade sheet. This year, OSSI is showing you three different grade types that are reflected throughout the school year for a student. The student's 2016-17 audit grade is reflected of the grade that was the final outcome during the audit period. The current enrollment grade is a grade that we currently see coming for that student coming across in your student information system to OSSI on a daily basis. This grade can be changed by the LEA by updating the grade in the student information system. The assessment and reporting grade is a calculated grade based on the longest time a student was seen in a particular grade for this school year. If a grade is missing, again, it will be reflected in red and the word missing will be written underneath it. Those would need to be resolved by entering the student's grade in your student information system. If a student was not at your LEA during the 2016-17 audit grade, that student's grade would not reflect in that subset. First ninth grade year. This is pertinent for all LEAs who serve students in grade 9 through 12. Students shown in the darkest blue are students whose first ninth grade year were previously verified through another certification process. If you have students that are in the lighter group blue that says first ninth grade year unverified, those students' first ninth grade year will need to be verified during this certification period. This will assist all LEAs who graduate students with the ACGR process. If you are in agreement with what OSSI has selected as the student's first ninth grade year, you do not need to take any action. If you do not agree with what OSSI has selected as the student's first ninth grade year, you will need to submit an OSSI support tool with the support, OSSI support tool ticket with the supporting documentation to show the actual student's first ninth grade year. This next sheet reflects students with disabilities. We show for you the student count by disability category. The highest FED level are students with disabilities FED level for the 16-17 school year. This is the highest level during any IEP um, received for an LEA during the school year. The current students with disability level count reflects that of a student's most recent IEP. We'll again show you the total number of students with disabilities. Please recall that if you only want to see active students, you will need to filter for just active students. 504 plan in 1617 is being collected through an Excel process. Your LEA will receive via the upload.dc.gov secure um, site a list of all students at your LEA. It is the responsibility of your LEA to submit back to OSSI in the same mechanism, upload.dc.gov, those students shown as either no for having a 504 plan, 504 plan ever in 16-17, or yes for having a 504 plan ever in 2016-17. Once OSSI has received that information from your LEA, your numbers will increase here based on what you have provided to OSSI. If what you have provided to OSSI is incorrect or you need to make additional changes or additions, please submit an OSSI support tool 
ticket so that it can be resolved through that mechanism. Historic students with disabilities. We show for you the student with disability status as of school year 13, 14, 14, 15, and 15, 16. Please note that these are historic data sets and therefore cannot be changed. We show you this information because we would like for you to see the data that are being used to determine whether or not a student should be monitored at the start of the testing period. Once your testing period begins, this data will be updated here. English learners. We show for you the current English learner status of your students. Please note that this information is pulled from your student information system daily and sent to OSI through the nightly feed. Students should come across with either a no as being an English learner or a yes. Students who do not have that indicated in the nightly feed will be reflected as no, as missing, and shown with the red bar. Likewise, the native language is sent across in your nightly feed to OSI, and any missing status will, will actually be shown here with the red bar. New to U.S. is indicative of all students who have been in the U.S. and receiving educational service less than 12 months. Any student who has been in the U.S. longer than 12 months should not be indicated as new to U.S. If a student is found to have been in the U.S. longer than 12 months and is indicated as new to U.S., there will be a unified data error that reflects that this information needs to change. Historic English Learner. Similar to the Students with Disability Historic page, we show for you the English learner status of your students between schools year 13, 14, 14, 15, and 15, 16. This information is used to, monitor, to determine which students will be monitored for EL during the 16, 17 process. You will show here the most recent access scores for composite and testing for their students' proficiency for this current school year. Economic disadvantage and at risk. This sheet reflects for you the form status of students as seen from the LEA SIS nightly feed. Students come across with a form status of either free, paid, CEP, or reduced. All students must have a form status. If a form status is missing, it will be reflected here in red. Nighttime residency. If a student is deemed homeless in your LEA SIS, that student must have a nighttime residency status. If no nighttime residency status is reflected for students who is selected as homeless in your LEA SIS, that information of missing will be reflected here in the red bar. Again, all students who are selected as homeless in your student information system and fed to OSI must have a nighttime residency status. That nighttime residency status can either be placed in your nightly feed to OSI, or you can update the McKinney-Vento quick-based application with the information. At risk. At risk is a derived field. That field is derived of the following TANF, and SNAP, which are received by OSI from the Department of Human Services. Um, CFSA, which is Child and Family Service Agency, sends us a nightly feed of students who are considered a ward of the state. Homeless is provided in two manners. One, via your LEA SIS in the nightly feed, or two, from the Community Partnership, who provides us with a list of all students in the district who are homeless. The other method by which um, at risk is calculated is through overage. Overage is only available for high school LEAs who serve grades 9 through 12. If a student is more than one year past its grade, then the student is considered overage. 
As was mentioned, we consider a student over age if the student is at least one year older than the expected age for the student's grade. As an example, we expect that a ninth grader is 14 years old. So if a student is 15 as of October 1st of the ninth grade year, this student is considered over age. If a student is indicated as any of the following, TANF, SNAP, CFSA, homeless, or overage, then that student is flagged as at risk. For economically disadvantaged, this is also a derived field, and a student is identified as economically disadvantaged if the student was ever free, reduced, or CEP for their farm status, or was TANF, SNAP, CFSA, or homeless. Overage does not apply to the economically disadvantaged field. Also, please note that schools who are CEP will have 100% of students identified as economically disadvantaged. The school testing window. This sheet reflects to you the testing window that you have provided to OSI in your school's test plan. Please review this when the sheet for accuracy of your school's test windows as this data will be used in other calculations throughout this application. The next three sheets all deal with testing uh, PARC, MSA, and DC Science. First, this is the PARC sheet. The first thing to look at is the registered test field and the assessment and reporting grade field. OSI ex is expecting these fields to match. So if a student's assessment and reporting grade is grade five, we expect the student to be registered for a grade five ELA and grade five math. There will be a unified data error triggered when this is not the case. In the registered test field, you may see a value of not registered. This value is triggered when OSI is expecting the student to be registered for the test, but the student is not registered. The resolution path is for the LEA to register the student for an assessment or to submit documentation of a medical exemption to OSI. Another value you may see is multiple tests. This occurs when the student is registered for more than one test in the Pearson Access Next or, Next or MSAA system. The resolution path is for the LEA to remove the incorrect registration from the PAN or MSAA system. The second set of information in this sheet concerns exemptions from testing. As OSI receives documentation of medical exemptions from LEAs, these data will be reflected in the application. If students are indicated as new to US in the LEA SIS and errors concerning new to US status are resolved, the status will also show in, the, in this data sheet. Remember that students are new to US if they have enrolled in a US for the first time in the previous 12 months. As the testing window continues, the PARC continuously enrolled field will begin to populate. Students are considered continuously enrolled if they were ever enrolled for each testing day of your school's testing window. Additionally, the full academic year field will also populate during the testing window. Please note that the PARC ELA or math population reflects those students that represent the universe of students who should test. The PARC ELA or math eligible participant population reflects that same universe minus those students who are new to US exempt, medically exempt, or who were not continuously enrolled during your school's testing window. Additionally, if students take a test, they are considered eligible participants. As the window continues, the tested PARC ELA or math field will also populate. This field represents the students who took that test. This next sheet is the MSAA sheet. It is uh, formatted similarly to the PARC sheet and contains the same field. Please note that for MSAA, the population is those students approved by OSI to participate in the MSAA exam. LEAs may test non-approved students, but these students will count against the school's particip participation rate for PARC. This is the DC Science Sheet. It is also set up similarly to the previous two testing sheets. For DC Science, the population is students in grade 5, 8, or who took biology. After we have concluded all 14 sheets in the CLIC application, 
I want to reiterate for you the certification timeline. All LEAs have from April 5th to June 22nd to ensure that all student data are accurate for those students who are enrolled and eligible to participate in any assessment. On June 23rd, LEAs will need to certify the data for those students eligible to participate in any assessment. Please look for training invites for the certification process in the month of June. For students who are not eligible to participate in any assessment, LEAs have until July 6th to review and update the data to as an accurate state as possible. On July 7th, that will be the final certification date for those students' data. Again, thank you for participating in the Consolidated Demographic Enrollment and Assessment Participation Certification Training. Again, if you need to um, submit for requests for additional support, please email aussie.data at dc.gov. Please note that you should not send student information in an email. To submit a ticket with individual student information, please submit an Aussie Support Tool ticket um, selecting the demo certification category and the 1617 subcategory. Again, thank you again for participating in this training.